Welcome, you're listening to a Rollmaster classic actual play set in Terry K. Amther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. Last episode, the party found out some information about the city of Tarek Nev on Aramor, while Silk and Cherry got to various shenanigans in the Black Obsidian Spire. We joined the party as they head out of the stockade, aiming for a ruined temple. You head off into the jungle, which is now beginning to steam slightly as the sun climbs higher and higher in the sky. The going is quite tough because you have to hack your way through some of the undergrowth, and then you abruptly come across, after maybe about an hour or so, you come across an open clearing. The land just drops away slightly in front of you, down a slight dip, and you can see an open grassy area um, in front of Careful you. Careful down here, boys and girls, so this could be that... Uh, uh, across to your right, you can hear running water, and you can see a thin screen of what has now become normal, thick, verdant vegetation. The grass itself, though, is somewhat unnatural. It is still pristine and slightly filmed in moisture. You've been warned by the sailors to give this, to treat this place carefully. Can you all make perception rolls? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> A number of you can make out that actually what actually is covering, the green covering that you can see is thick moss. The moss is so thick and so old and so tall that it almost resembles um, one to two centimetre length pieces of grass. The moss itself has swarmed and covered um, some creepers, some fallen bits of tree and other plant debris. So the ground is not as even as it once looked. Curious as to the nature of this moss, and not altogether put off by moss, after all. A number of you begin to head down towards it until Ugnan and Silk grab you and say, no, look carefully. They can see, certainly Ugnan can say, and he points at what looks like a slightly larger lump. And as you look closely, sure enough, Ugnan and Silk have spotted there are things moving underneath the moss. Oh, weird. Slowly, but moving, almost like things moving underneath blanket and of course this blanket is damp wet moss ancient damp wet moss oh we give wow that a swerve? yeah can we is there any way we can get around this you can to get around it you you're going to have to turn right and head into the deep verdant jungle growth to your right rather than taking an easy route through the moss what do you guys think the the devil we know or the one we don't how, how wide is the moss field or the moss patch the moss field will take you about 15 to 20 minutes across and there's things crawling under the moss like we can see it almost like bugs bunny kind of thing uh yes but bigger than bugs these things are large man large oh wow can can and... can noom will take a branch or a long a long a long stave or something and poke it into the moss and see what happens whoa, 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 wait 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 Wait, yeah, yeah. Good. do it from afar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chuck it. Like, chuck it for... Uh, if, if, uh, you're yeah. gonna, if you're going to do that, I want to prepare a shock bolt and over prepare it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You uh, see you see the mages. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <That's not laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> uh, Crankcrest scratches his head and say, look, why do we want to like, fuck with these things? Why can't we just try and go around the edge? We could, but yeah. isn't, isn't that the place where there's too. trees that are alive as well? Yeah. Didn't you hear them in the dark last night, like f felling trees as they walk? Or things yeah, falling so out of the why trees. Not, why not just like run like buggery then straight across? Hang I on, only need to be on. faster than you, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pull out all the books that I have. Does anything like jump out memory wise from like fauna of this place or flora? Uh, if you remember, somebody told you about creatures that live underneath the moss. Remember what? When you first arrived, you were told that some of the sailors had been grabbed by creatures that live under the moss. Okay, um, I don't remember too well then. They grab you, and they pull you under the moss, and they suffocate you. Oh, wow. So yeah, if if I remember even remotely that stuff, then yeah, go for it then. Uh, I say maybe we should just go through the... Okay, <laughs> here's my addiction factor one. I forgot to roll that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, guys, for remembering for me. Because <laughs> uh, Rook's got a high. Oh, I've been oh, lucky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think we 
skirt around the moss. Don't yeah. don't stuff with it. Um, I'm alright. Like so, if we're turning, we're head, we were heading north, and now we're turning to our right. It means we'd be heading to our yeah. Yeah. So you were heading. Um, sorry, northwestwards. I'm sorry. I've got my direction. Northwestwards. Wrong. Yeah, you're heading right. northwestwards. So if you turn right, you're now heading north northwestwards. So if you okay. head that for a while, but if you remember, you were told that if you follow the if you follow the river or a small river stroke stream, that will lead you to the ruins. And across to your right, right, you can hear running water. Let's go find that. Like, yeah, by going around yeah. this moss and keeping an eye out for other mossy areas. And lie on the trees or in above the trees. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Arrow knocked, but not. Okay. Um, with Cran leading, pushing and uh, forcing his way through the vegetation, um, none of which is familiar to you. Some of it is wet, scatter away, brightly coloured birds, insects, and so on, but nothing that looks particularly nasty, although there is some rather large and angry reptiles that hiss at you and then hop off and scuttle away into the undergrowth. Uh, led by Cran, you force your way through the undergrowth, away from the rather eerie moss field, and you head towards the river. The river itself is actually not as wide as you thought, but it is quite swiftly flowing. It's about 15 feet wide at its widest point, heading its way with some speed towards the south. The banks on either side of the river are clearer of vegetation, so you can actually move far more quickly than you thought the otherwise if you hug the river. Moving swiftly now through the forest, you eventually come to a huge outcropping, standing on top of which you can see a sandstone ruined temple. Okay, so while we're going past water, I'll let Lissa in. They we might have to move quickly, so... Um... They got, we can see some tokens at the moment, Stuart. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, tell me again, are they... You can see our token. you can see the tokens, you might want to... Yeah, that's fine, yes, no, that's fine. No, that's good, you should see them. Okay. Oh, good, so they're, friend, they're friends, they're friends then. <laughs> oh, yes, they're waiting to welcome you. So you can see scampering around on... Uh, these things which some of you would recognise as garks, ape-like things, hostile jungle dwellers, clearly this is their home. They haven't noticed you, you are still some way back, but they are swarming around the top of this temple. Some are large, some are small, uh, all of them are armed. What makes garks particularly difficult uh, denizen of um, jungles is that these fellas are and spears and so the stories go they can use their tails uh, prehensile they can use their tails to grapple with oh, as well cool. so as small as these are as they're not the most intelligent of creatures they can be numerous and quite vicious and cunning fighters are they decorated with anything like uh, any mannish bones skulls anything like that uh yes they are indeed so these might be the ones we'd surmise as the ones that like human flesh or mannish flesh that's so, right probably. garks will eat most things when they can get them so so crap. Crap. Yeah, <laughs> like mines. <laughs> there you go. So, Cran, as you come up the river bank, uh, leading your indomitable companions, uh, you can see this rocky outcropping, or will do soon, I hope, uh, and it's swarming with uh, garks. I say swarming, there are five of them. Yeah, it's, just, it's still them. not up yet. Do it, don't think. Okay, you'll just wait a few minutes and it should, and you'll think, wow, well, that's an impressive map. Yes, so. What's the plan here? Are we just going to go full on? I don't think we can talk a way out of this. Let me put yeah, the rest not, of you on this while we're waiting. I might be able to intimidate a way out of it if I... Mm -hmm. uh, Garks out. can be... I mean, Garks can speak, uh, often have rudimentary language skills. Um, of course, these have been sort of left alone on this island for a thousand years, so exactly what language they can speak and choose, don't know. Looking at them, are any of them um, sort of half half bred? I, I, I hate to use the word half-breed. <laughs> No, these are pure gark, so more animal man. Whereas it sounds like the cabin boy that uh, the captain was talking about was at least half human, so therefore um, had some manners and um, knew not to piss into the wind, for example. Okay. I think we just go full on and see if we can get them to... Oh, that's not a bad map, man. I'm, I'm like... Well, the Canadian gets it first. <laughs> no, blame, <laughs> blame it on Brexit. <laughs> we blame everything on Brexit at the moment. Yeah, this, can, yeah. Now the Brit British have just renegotiated their entire UK internet strategy with AT and T. That's why. Oh, <laughs> God, you don't want that. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice image. 
um, Craig. I don't know if you've seen that link, folks, while you're waiting for your map. That's, uh, yeah, that's a nice jungle image. Oh, I'm, yeah, nice. I'm looking at, oh, I'm wow. Looking at the map just... on Matt's dream on Twitch. Well, well, you're not, you're not knocking these up on the fly, are you, Craig, uh, in, in the background? Yes, he is. The, yes, he these is. images, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I had to spare five minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. That is phenomenal. I've got that. The, I've got the image now. The map. Sorry. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thank you. I don't know if any of you have the Aaron Moore PDF at all. Uh, no, Magic. You used to. Yeah, I've got the original book. But right, that's yeah. the thing. You've got I the was... original book. I've kind of uh, redrawn all inside and digitized them. Um, oh, nice. I'll, I'll double check the sizes. At the end of this module, folks, I'll maps. I've redone i'll put up on the google drive so you can have them oh that's thank you awesome. that's actually lovely that's... Cheers, so sir. there you go you can see um cropping there's no obvious way up from the eastern side or the southern side you can see a low wall which ugnan has sort of hunkered by as a silk the creatures themselves are hooting to each other cavorting around that two of them seem to be throwing what looked like lumps of fruit at each other. They've not noticed you at all. Though the sun is now quite high, the thickness of the vegetation, the curvature of the land, means they're totally oblivious of your presence. What do you reckon? Shot across the bowels with the old, uh, the old boat? Don't get that out very often. Definitely less risky than attacking these things with axes. Yeah, I mean, I mean the only thing I'm worried about is if we can see six, ones of those 600. Yeah. But I'm okay. guessing that be... Well, in that case, we're absolutely screwed, I would guess. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, I, I was having a look to see if I had religion law to, you know, work out what, what would likely be the case. I'm guessing, like, these are the normals and the specials would be inside. Um, let's try and... Well, do we want to pull them back here to fight, or do we want to try and flank them and come up in relative safe safety before yeah. engaging. Did you say, Stuart, yeah. that the, the slope nearest us is quite steep? Yes, it is. Um, you could climb it with a little bit of difficulty, so I would say, uh, certainly in armour, it's going to be a, a very hard climb. Uh, obviously, some of you can leap in probable distances and probably get up there. That rocky outcrop will be about 20 foot high. Crant uh, just shrugs his shoulders and says, right, need to start walking around west then. <laughs> Come up the slope. Why, 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 are we, why are we interested in this temple complex? Is, is there a thought that there's treasure here as well? There's weapons here which can be used to fight demons in the city. Right. Mm. Yeah, so the idea is that if this is the Temple of the Forgotten Knight, you were told by the seer to go here first to recover items which would help you, weapons which would help you fight demons. And you know from the pirates and also from other stories that the city is infested with demons and spirits and all sorts of horrible things that link your face. Also, of course, there's just a simple fact that temple is somewhat out of place as regards buildings all the buildings on this small island are in a little bit odd so it's of interest for that uh, on that account as well and fight garks and get treasure or fight demons and get treasure what would you rather do mm -hmm. true uh, so we could i reckon sorry Carl. no i was gonna say i reckon i could like have one off the top there with a bow and then uh, we'll just shoot until either they come and attack us or run away and then we'll walk around we don't need a killer ball we just need to get into the temple really don't we scare yeah scare them away yeah or maybe even set like an ambush so we could all be ready with maximum preparation and then one of the outwardly sort of easy marks uh, could be put themselves out in the open they come to charge them and then we ambush them somehow Okay, yeah, that well, sounds like a job for me then, <laughs> with no armor. <laughs> well, I was thinking that you and I were probably at that point going to be concentrating with spells that we prepped. Yeah. Well, I can cast a shield that's uh, that protects me. Are you are you okay with your shield? Uh, yeah, I probably got, I actually could do that, but probably cast it on Cran first. Oh, can you cast shield on him? Yeah, I think I got a uh, true aura for him. Oh, nice. I've got shield mastery the list. Uh, it can only be on myself. So Cran, Cran grabs his pack and like shuffles around and uh, pulls out the um, the horn of Valhalla out of it and says, um, "I think we're going to go into the city today. If we're not, give this a crack. This will help." I've got a feeling we're probably going to have to go and have a good look around that temple. I imagine it's not easy to get to some of the stuff. So we don't have to go today. We've still got a few days before they get here. I think. In fact, we might even have a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you agreed that we would return for you in four days. I think. But I'll double check what I wrote on the information. Yeah, I think it was that. Well, right. Yeah, well, if the skyship came even today, we could have just said, look, come back in X amount of time anyway. Yeah. So what do you reckon? So buff up Cram. Cram, if I hit you with the true aura one, that's 10 minutes per level. 
I, I don't think these are going to cause that much problem. If they're kind of fairly intelligent, but fairly animalistic, yeah. and they're tribal, then if we take one or two of them out, they're not going to fight to the death. Yeah. They're not off, I should think. And especially not, if yeah. we... Yeah, I mean, we may even be able to like throw some food for them or do something like that. Although they're if they're highly territorial, they might not do that. Is there any of them which looks bigger and badder and maybe dressed differently to the rest? You can see that there are probably if I like the out. You can see there would be sort of two larger males. There are a couple of smaller females who look quite vicious, and there's a number of younger males as well. So they all look as if they could handle themselves in a fight. They're similarly armed with crude spears and rather nasty looking knives. None of them look to be leaders. You don't see any more sick and they seem more to be resting and cavorting around this place rather than guarding it. So you might be able to drive them away. Yeah, let's try that without hurting them first and if they try to attack us then we can draw them. Try to pull out the Horn of Valhalla and go, uh, wonder if they don't like the noise this makes. Well, no, just, no, no. I'm going to be prudent. I'm going to cast True War on Crown first. Okay. Oh, thanks, mate. Oh, no. Uh, oh, dear. I'm glowing like a Palicia beacon now. <laughs> uh, so that's a fail, isn't it? Yep. Is it open-ended for this one, I think? High open-ended. Uh, let me pull up. So, Fumble, Spell Law, uh, Non-Attack. Yep. Um, so, yes, that's an open-ended. What's the difference between open-ended and high open-ended, by the way? Um, It'll go low. Yeah, so open-ended means it will go high, or uh, high open-ended means it only goes high. <laughs> oh, 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 nice. oh, you cheat. <laughs> okay, uh, a momentary lapse in concentration delays the start of the spell for one round. So nice. you cast the spell, and certainly gets the benefit of the spell, but it takes you a little bit longer than you thought. Okay, so you got the time to start it on 70 minutes then, Crown, plus, uh, yeah. plus, plus 15 dB. Okay, so Cran, um, not noticeably swells, uh, but you see his axe seems to look a little keener, his armour a little cleaner, and he moves with a slightly more animalistic grace shortly before he scratches his arse. <laughs> it was shrug his shoulders, me, me Betty's uh, uh, caught, up me, right. caught up in me knickers, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Ugnan, you cast a spell too. Any of you want to position yourselves or pre-prepare any other spells before you commence hostility? So, Cran yeah. is going to just get to that corner and peer around as quietly as he can, if that's okay. And yeah. just uh, line up short bandy leg humanoid too with yeah, sure. the heart bow as a... Or maybe... Humanoid 5 if he's right on the top. Whatever's the easiest looking against the skyline type mm. shot. I mean, Humanoid 5 it, or Humanoid 2 who sort of moves up onto the steps there. Um, it's probably easy. One hit and the others are a little bit too further back. But certainly you could hit 5 or 2. So you can line up on 5 or 2. It looks yeah, like these creatures are beginning to settle down almost as if they're going to sort of doze in the late morning sun. Um, I feel really bad. These are basically like intelligent animals and we got yeah. to surprise them and kill them. Why, why don't we try and drive them off? They got, well, that's they're what I mean. Human, they're, they're wearing human skulls, mate. Oh, fuck them then. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll uh, line one up. Okay, so uh, Cray, Cray, Bran positions himself with his bow. Silk, where do you want to position yourself and what do you want to ready yourself to do? Yeah, I'll, I'll basically have... Uh, Prep shock bolt now, and I'll take a position. Once I see Cran released, I'll take a position right behind this big rock here. Okay, so you sneak up to there. Can you give me a stealth roll, please, Silk? Okay, this is the minute he releases, though. Otherwise, I'm. I'm oh, right, moving. okay, as soon as he releases. Yeah. Okay, so you can stay there then. Uh, Numel, where do you want to position yourself? So I'm going to use my short bow, and so I need to position myself in a position in which I can deploy it. So maybe beside Cran or just behind him? Uh, you could step to the side of Cran, yes, so you could step kind of up there, and yep. you'd be able to hit two or number five. Okay, Shana, where do you want to position yourself? You're right next to a lowish wall. The wall's I say low, the wall's about three foot high in patches, covered with uh, stout green creepers. Okay, so Shana positions herself just in front of the two archers. Ugnan, do you want to take your position sort of slightly to the rear? You read my mind, yeah, exactly that, yes, please. Okay, 
Right, the creatures are totally oblivious of your presence until there's a an audible twang as Cran releases the string on the heart bow. So, um, Cherry crossed the... Oh, I'm sorry, Cherry. I didn't ask you at all. That's really... No. Cherry, where are you? Horrible, where are you? horrible person. <laughs> uh, so you've crossed over to the river. Yeah, I want to uh, get... So it's I'm like... not that fast flowing. Well, it's fast flowing, but it's not that deep. So you're yep. able to cross and line yourself up. Uh, yes, you can definitely hit two. Excellent. So, yeah, oh. I'm... So when Cran hit gets ready to go on his shot, you're going to go on yours, and Numa will yep. go for. Um, okay. Actually, let's let's if we can roll for uh, yeah, let's roll for an initiative now, then please, folks. Okay, so, so I'm going to go past Silk Ugnan. The creatures are totally unaware of your presence. Um, Cran, six feet, excellent. There's no penalties, and let's have at it. And the, the arrow flies wide, doesn't strike the creature. It flickers off into the jungle, um, and they're actually oblivious to the shot. <laughs> Cherry, off you go. See if you can do better. Oh, I certainly will attempt to. Nice. Okay, this time your arrow thumps home into the meat of the creature. Can you resolve your E puncture for me, please? Nice shooting, oh. Cherry. At uh, some distance away, the arrow flickers into the creature's shoulder just as it was reaching for what looks like a piece of food of some description. The creature shrieks and pulls, tugs at the arrow, howling in pain. At about the same time, Numal pieces his arrow too. So to do that, I, do I need to... Um... Yeah, so if you take the dice <coughs> and yep. drop them on the creature that you are on in the combat tracker, and drop them on the creature that you're fighting, I don't know, in a while since we... Okay, so and if I you have wanna... to take the dice on the short bow and drop it on number five, I think. Uh, creature number five was the one I think I was aiming at. Okay. And if you want to know range, you can left-click your mouse button while you hold control down and it'll give you the range that you're shooting from. Uh, your arrow also flies wide, uh, but this time the creatures alert the howls and suffering of their companion, look around angrily and hiss uh, off in the jungle. Okay, folks, if any of you want to move or you've got readied actions, you can take those now before we jump into round three. I know a number of you are ready. Ugnan, I think you're waiting. Uh, Silk and Shana, though, if you want to move or to release any spells, you can do so. I'll just prep um, Shock Bolt, just in case. Okay. Uh, and I mean, that's you could it. have been prepping that last round. Silk, do you have a spell ready or yes. are you still prepping? Same thing. I'll just keep prepping and then I'll move to behind the rock now. I okay. won't stop, though. I'll make it plainly obvious that's where I am. Okay. So, Shana, you were ready in speed, is that right? Okay, so uh, can we have initiative game? Then uh, things will then start to kick off, say. And I wonder who's going to win the battle with the initiative. <laughs> Come on now, Numel. Numel, Numel is around. He's got a good Yeah, initiative. Numel's quick. Cherry's quick. Yeah, not today, it seems. <laughs> uh, uh, Numel in the combat tracker, there's I N I T with uh, two grey shadow dice roll. Yeah, so you can roll that. Just drop it in the uh, chat. Oh, got it, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was rolling the whole bunch of Is that it? Nice roll, buddy. Uh, uh, okay. Silk with, 40, enough, Silk with 41 initiative. Don't patronise us, man. <laughs> Every character I make, uh, no matter what, gets the highest stat, I swear. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I'm a role master GM, and quickness is important, man. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll uh, continue prepping, and anything that comes at me, I'll release the shock bolt. Uh, actually, okay. so I won't continue prepping. I'm sorry. Opportunity action: shoot whatever gets close. Done. Okay, uh, Shana. If they're coming at us, then um, I will activate speed and take them on. Okay, all right. So basically, as soon as they if they come down the ruins at you, still will bolt them and you'll leap in and hit them. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that. climbing up the hill. Okay. For them. All right. So number five, who isn't injured, howls and shrieks, uh, leaps down one level, leaps down a one another level, but is now slightly hidden. He ducks down behind a pillar. And you can see he's readying his spear to throw. So they're quite clever, these. The other creature swarms across to and begins to nimbly climb down. 
he's going to come at you, but not yet. Noon Wobbler, it's your turn. Uh, can I can I shoot my uh, bow bow again? That's uh, the closest creature. Yeah, it's a short bow, so I think I think there's a penalty to fire a short bow every round. But the penalty, I think, is only something like minus ten or minus twenty. Yeah, um, minus ten. Minus ten. Sixty so, percent yes. for reloading, loading a short bow, and fifty percent to fire. Yeah, so minus ten to fire that short bow again. Alpha. Okay, so I put a minus 10 in the modifier. Yeah, that will do it. Die next to the short bow and drop it on. Is it short bandy uh, legged human, Gark number two? Yep, you can go for number two who is stunned this round. Might as well hit him again. Try to hit him again. Okay. That arrow flies into the masonry feet and misses, I'm afraid. The Gark limps back, clutching his shoulder and hooting. Bugnan, it's your turn. Just carry on prepping, shot bolt. Okay, uh, number four moves around and begins to clamber down. And uh, number three also. Cran, his creature is um, beginning to move at you. Cran all places longbow carefully against the wall. I've really got time to unstring it now. And he's going to wary of the, uh, of the humanoid five with the spear. Uh, he's going to go behind this side of the wall. Look at 60 feet. Yep. 15. Can I hop over the wall there? Is that fairly low? Yes, I'm, no, I'm going to let you hop over. 25, 25, 30, 35, kind of reach to there. And then kind of try and use that wall as a bit of cover before it yep. gets to the rocks. And the angle will be about pretty hard to 35, 40, 45, 60. Um, so he's kind of making his way along there, got his, uh, taking his axe out as he's going to head those off at the pass, so to speak. And that's yep. his action. Yeah, I get you. Gark number six. Cherry. Goodness me, it's unlike you to go last. Cherry, what do you want to do? <laughs> I, I've been rolling particularly poor with my <laughs> But that's good. It means I get a chance to see what everyone's doing. So I can still see humanoid number two? Yes, you can. Uh, so if you've got a short bow, minus ten, and you can have... Yep. Uh, your arrow thumps home the game. Poor old Gark is uh, not doing well. Can you roll your A puncture critical, please? So your arrow flies out oh! on the other sides of the river and headshot makes life <laughs> difficult for the poor fool. Ah, <laughs> there is something about this party in noses, isn't there? <laughs> so you've taken the, the carp's nose off. Um, he's stunned and unable to parry for another three rounds as his face turns in one direction and strangely his nose heads in another direction <laughs> followed by an arrow <laughs> oh. give him a pierced nostril yeah. he's now the punk rocker of the gark community <laughs> <laughs> okay um right let's have uh, initiative please oh look at cran being all fast good job buddy <laughs> okay but not fast enough still okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I'll continue waiting until they're they're close. Um, that way, I'll just get. But everybody else Isn't gets. Isn't it a wonderful chance. how the fastest person in the in the party in their turn every round is? I'll wait. I'll yeah. wait. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. wait. Just <laughs> rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Twice. There. Yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> so Silk readies her spell as Gark number six uh, leaps over the top and comes down ready to climb down. We can't do anything more. Number five stands up, can't see anything, and hunkers down again. Number two is stunned and hooting in pain. Cran, it's your turn. You can see there are a number of Garks beginning to climb down. You probably spotted number five stand up with his spear, but you couldn't see anything to hit. So I'm cr crouching. I'm probably not going to be very quiet, but I'm going to basically just move 20 feet, not very far at all. Yeah. And uh, ready, basically to crunch the double-headed axe into something that... Okay. Right, so I think, yeah, so for both you and Shana, if anything, let you swing at them first. You've readied attack. Uh, I'm assuming, Shana, you just... Yeah, same for me. 
Okay, so if anything comes in, you get first swing at them. Bugnan, uh, yep. still preparing shot bolts? Yeah, prepping. I'm just going to take the small amount of movement I've got just to get to the edge of the okay. wall, trying to keep it as cover. All right, well, this creature does come down and come in at uh, towards Silk. So, Shana, I'll let you step in and hit it first. Thank you. Do I get speed as well? I have... Yes, you do. Yep. Bye, Gark. Nice knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. yep, that's fine. Hey, Sharna, okay. why didn't you, like, hurt him? <laughs> uh, the, first, the first wild strike misses as the guard uses its tail to actually pull itself out of the way of the attack. Wow. Nice. That's cool. But the second one hammers home. Um, so that's, uh, let me just double check, that is Gark number one. Ooh, dear. And that is <laughs> a B. Thank you. I, I showed a 95. I did too. I just looked and saw it was only 50. So the throw um, of Gar and absolutely catches him across the solar plexus, winding him, uh, knocking him back on his backside. He's stunned for a round and unable to do anything apart from gulp helplessly for air like a goldfish that's just been pulled out of his bowl. Gar number three, meanwhile, leaps nimbly down and comes scampering across the grass, hooting and hissing. Cran, you can step forward and intercept it and hit as he comes across, or you can wait and let it go past. It hasn't seen you. Oh, in that case, I'll ambush him if that's possible. Do we need to make an ambush check to do that? You can make a normal roll to hit him, and you can then use your ambush uh, number to raise or lower the results you get on your critical table. Okay. Uh, so normal please. attack roll, uh, but you're attacking fine with a plus something or other, I can't remember. Uh, there are modifiers. We have combat, um, blah, blah, blah. rear attack is plus 35. Plus 35, well, okay. Um, oh, sorry, just used the wrong weapon. So I just roll again to... Yeah, re-roll yeah, it so. again, because it's the critical table where we messed up as well. Sorry. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So that's... Forty-one. Actually, uh, that should be mm. another thirty. Should be another thirty-five on top of that. Sorry. Uh, it's off the table. Um, no one likes to show off, John. Forty-one. Yes, <laughs> forty-one is as good as it gets. So give me your e slash. You step out of the uh, cover of the wall, catching the creature from behind. Totally unexpected. And if you want to roll your e slash critical, please. Oh, that's not so good. I, right, can adjust, so, I can adjust yeah. it up by two only, if that helps. Uh, yeah, uh, it will uh, knock the foe down to, rather than four hits. So basically, it adds another couple of points to it. The creature is badly injured and spins around as your axe catches it across the upper back, almost taking it in the neck, but not quite. Uh, what an anticlimax after the such a good Yeah, creature. shame that. Number four hops down, charge oh, through, then. attack Cran. He's got 15 extra dB if he hasn't added that already. Like that, so there's only an extra 40 on this anyway, so, or 40 on this attack. So, so the creature lashes out with a knife and actually manages to hit the warrior for a single point of damage. So a light cut, probably across the face. And, and uh, Numel, I think Numel would probably step in to attack Gark number one with his weapon. So Long Kainak with his Gark number one. With a flank in that position? Yeah, there should be actually, given maybe an able So I'm going to call that 16 EP. That was nice number job. one, wasn't it? Yep. He will then get critical roll, which catches the Gark across the lower back. Stunning him, giving him a nasty bleeding wound as well, and pretty much setting him up for a coup de grace, probably from Shana. Uh, if she wishes to take it, of course. Okay, doing something amazing and fantastic. Number six is within sight if you want to bow, or you could put the bow away and move into flea range if you feel confident. Okay, yeah, I, I think I've done enough damage. <laughs> Dude. Okay. I was either going to go for the, the total kill or, but I suppose, yeah, no, he's bleeding. I know he's bleeding. About bounce of blood coming out his nose. So number six is, oh, who's, who's that? Oh, that's Cran taking on two at a time. Is the wall in the way of my line sight if yes. I need to assist Cran? Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. means I'd have to forward back across the ward. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try and keep the long, the, the ones that are still in way. Yeah, it's got the minus. Yeah, so uh, so that's seven and an eight puncture on number six. So your arrow manages to strike the creature. Oh, not for much. I'm just getting my eye in on her, giving her a ping. And your arrow takes the creature at her lower leg, so the ping begins to bramble down the rocks. You catch it across the uh, lower leg, 
and it tumbles Absolutely. down, tumbles down the rest of that rocky slope, um, landing in a rather ungainly heap near the wall. Cool. Clearly stunned, surprised by the Arab, which be coming. It was at this point we ran out of time in this session and had to pick it up in a subsequent session where there were a few minor changes like token appearances. It's, right, and that's... Anyway, so I'll shut up now. Please. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's kill some Gux. Yeah, let's kill Gux. Right, so uh, I've shared the combat tracker, folks. Um, we've got no Craig tonight for a migraine. I think Noom will be on his way. Um, I've sent a message. I think British clocks changing has thrown everybody. Okay, so I've just gone. I've just changed the token. Frankly, my eyesight was beginning to struggle. So, can we start with some initiative, Rob, please? Fran is on fire. Look at that for initiative. Only do you. Not surprisingly. Now, now. <laughs> Silk goes first. <laughs> okay, and I'll just shock bolt that's all it was. So Gark number four is being uh, attacked by Shana and Numel at the moment. Right. So you've got a line of sight on six and five if you wished. Cherry was off Mima with her bow, and I think she had a speed on number three. I think. Okay, if if six is is okay, then I'll do that instead. Yeah. Just a little bit further. Uh, so yeah, I'll chuck it, and here we go. All I need is an A. <laughs> 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 to blow uh, a nose off. That's right. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's good. This is going to be a nose injury, isn't it? Oh, so, uh, one was that. That was Gart number six. So that's um, ten points. And you've done uh, an A critical, please. That's all I need, baby. 99. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope. Uh, no. You have, however, managed to unbalance him, so you've knocked the uh, poor Gark off his feet, uh, and he sits down on his rump, snarling, and that... rubbing his chest, which is probably smouldering slightly. <laughs> and uh, Gark number six will pick himself up, uh, and he'll move in there, wary of being bold to the game. But Gark, Gark number one. four will, I think, attack Shana. So they're attacking with quite crude hatchets. So they function as hand axes. And that's a miss. So he misses with his hand axe. Ugnan, it's your turn. Okay, I've got um, maximum prep on a shock belt. I just slowly move forward towards yeah. the... Yeah, so you've got 10% of your movement. So that's probably one square then, so that'll be... Yeah, something like that. Okay. So Cran... I seem to remember Gark 2 was running by and I kind of surprised him, is that right? That's right, yes. So I think... I'm not sure I did it. I don't think I did a great job hitting him, but I will attack him again. Yeah, Gark 2 has has suffered 10 points of damage. He's not stunned or bleeding, but he's certainly now uh, focused on you. Can't see uh, Ugnam behind on the other side of the wall. Okay, so apply another minus 25 and just attack with that. That's not ideal. Um, and I suspect that may miss. No, uh, that was on number two. No, that's managed to hit him. So you... Points. And you've done a B crush critical. So if you want to uh, rock your B crush critical, please. 58. Um, I thought that was 85. I... No. Uh, you're, so you're, so you're attacking with your side, aren't you? No, this, I, no, I'm using the. I'm still using the axe. I'm not. Oh, so you see, your axe, your trusty uh, axe, slashes out, catches the creature across the thigh, threatening to break it. But it certainly spins him down, and he loses his footing and slumps down on one knee. He's going to be stunned for a round, unable to do anything. Cool. Uh, okay, so then we'll go to Sharma, who is going to be attacking Gart the Four. Uh, so that's a nine, sorry, five, and a B critical. Okay, so she reaches out, wrenches his arm, slam. That's right, next win. Uh, Gark number two that you've just hit is unable to do anything. He backs away slightly into the bushes, hobbling on what is clearly a badly damaged leg. 
Meanwhile, uh, guard number three comes scampering across the brickwork, howling and hooting angrily. Um, so you've lost sight of him, I'm afraid, um, Cherry. Uh, you're going to have to find mm. another target. Uh, no, you've still actually got... Sorry, where you are? Uh, Cherry. Guard number three. If you want to three. Yeah, if you wanted to. Uh, meanwhile, guard number one, who... John also has what looks like some sort of crude hatchet. These hand axes, though, have been made out of some sort of stone or flint type material. Um, they're quite crude and the blades aren't particularly sharp, but they're heavy enough, hefty enough to actually do some significant damage should they hit. Anyway, the creature with a howl smashes his axe at you. And I think that's probably going to be a miss. Yes. Oh, no. He grazes you um, across one of your arms. One point of damage. Ha! That'll teach you about the dangers of going into the jungle. Unfortunately, it's poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That comes later. Cherry, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. So, draw a bead on number three. Let rip. Oh, no. 96. <sighs> And your arrow flickers off into the bushes somewhere to join the others that have flickered off into the bushes. Well, that is amongst the, the, the stone. Uh, right. So Numel will attack Gartner what? well to try and put it down. And that's a graze. Doesn't do a lot of damage, Gart, but he does it enough to uh, make him think twice about attacking you. Okay, initiative, please. That's more normal for Cran. Uh, I'm a bit worried about Silk. She's dipping into the low 40s. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> no! <Numel! laughs> nice bonus. <laughs> Holy dooly. Can I say, what, what bonus is supposed to be applied to initiative? I'm... Quickness. Quickness. Ah, right. Okay. That's why. Cool. Plus his size now. penalty if he was big as Cran. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Silk. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Silk's going to move in five feet. And was Gark 4 still moving or no? Yeah, Gark 4 is moving. But he's obviously surrounded. So you can squeeze past him. He's occupied by two other fighters. You can move past him if you want. There's no attack of opportunity or anything. No, I'm going to I'm gonna finish him off so that it frees the bigger people to chop other things. <laughs> Okay. So I'll give it a, a sweep. <laughs> a bare-fisted sweep. Uh, rank one is the max. Okay. Um, flank or rear flank? Here? Yes, I will give you uh, flank. Uh, no, okay. I'll give you rear flank because Numel was the first person. Sorry, rear. Because Numel was the last person to attack and he did damage. He was spun round to face the blade that hit him. Thank you. Thank you. So I need you everything. Rear. Like oh, sorry. Kia! <laughs> but it's so true. So minus three for moving five feet, and we've got a rear. Oh, I'm effective. Here we go. We'll see. Oh. Uh, nice. So that was enough damage to strike the Gark. So you lash out with sandal foot. Uh, catch the Gark. Uh, in his unprotected rump. Off you go, roll your uh, B critical. For your oh, a B. Let's Here see we go. if you can kick him into the wall. <laughs> Roundhouse low, then high. Well, you probably caught him in the family jewels. <laughs> um, so you've certainly stunned him for a round and delivered another five hit points. So your blow from behind has obviously stunned the Gark again. He's going to be unable to defend himself effectively against Shana and Numel. Nice attack. Uh, Gark number two is now able to attack. He's not keen on facing Ukran and comes round the bushes, leaping up towards the wall. Doesn't really want to fancy some nostril flaring barbarian with an axe. <laughs> Uh, Gark number five, however, will come in and will attack Numel. And that is a meaty thump and does 20 points 
and catches the unsuspecting across the back of the head, I suspect. And there's a D crush critical on him. And that is a hefty blow as well. Bo is stunned, so Numel collapses, gasping in pain, as the axe thuds into the rear of his back, knocking him to the ground. Numel's in a bad way, and the Gark howls and thumps his chest, uh, much like Cran does. Gark number six will come in and leap onto the rock above your head, Silk. Obviously, he's going to leap on you next round. And Ugnan, it's your turn. You right. can't see Numal at all, but you'd probably notice his head drop out of sight. You can make of that what you will. Okay, well, there's a Gark number two coming around the corner, so he's going to just yes. hit him with that instead. Right, okay, so it should be a 70 modifier, because within 10 feet, there's plus 20 yeah. for max mount prep, and if Lamboyant incantations, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's 100 in any book. Uh, not in mine it isn't, although that's it to do. Ooh, I think you've just divided the world by zero because you've broken the combat track. Uh, um, so well, hold on, I'm that's... just trying to figure out what you've done. No, so that's... that's so, oh no, that's 172, that's that's 100. that's why it's off. Yes, that's yeah, it's just no, a no, lot take, of... Take, take, take 35 off that because it's added an adjustment of plus 70, but it should be plus 35. That's all right, the range. combat track, it doesn't go that hard, it only goes up to 100. Okay. <laughs> uh, you've killed him three times. Uh, so that's uh, Gart number two takes uh, 18 points, obviously. Uh, he says obviously. And then you've rolled a D, electricity critical. So with a fizz, your bolt smashes the creature in the shield arm. Fortunately, no damage to his nose, which has become something of a signature feature for you guys. <laughs> Um, that's got number two. Uh, so you've done that. So the poor old creature lumps to the ground. Um, he's dead. Yay. Hey. Uh, but his nose is not That's a cool crit. Very cool. So reacting very quickly, Ug spins round and absolutely hammers the creature to the ground, uh, leaving a smoking ruin against the wall. Uh, meanwhile, Shana is still attacking Gark number four. Uh, now a little bit worried as these Garks begin to circle. She's just seen her friend go down. So she'll do a rank four sweep, I think, on Gark number four. That's a rank four versus my rank one. <laughs> baby steps, uh, baby steps. <laughs> yeah. But you do it in a far more pleasing and feminine style. <laughs> uh, You've never got a bit of your anatomy stuck in someone's head, unlike Shano at some point. Probably. Yes. So she's mm. done an E critical. That's a 77. So the throw hurls him to the ground. His arm is shattered and useless and he's stunned for four rounds. He's effectively out of the fight. Uh, Gart number one, however, is still functioning, attacking Ukraine. Uh, he manages again to scrape his axe across probably the back of one of your meaty hands. Three points of damage, Cran. Another flesh wound and a scar to go with your collection. You cheeky fairy bastard, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, Gart number three leaps onto the wall. He's going to come at you, Cran, from above next round. Be careful. Uh, Cran, your turn. Oh, I see you up there, you cheeky git. And then uh, he's going to take him out with an axe. Um, so that's 26 points and a D slash critical on that poor unfortunate Gark, who's going to regret that. Not particularly dangerous. All right. It knocks him back and he fumbles with his axe. So he's going to have to uh, parry next round. He can't attack you. And what I'll do is I'll just take a, like, move five, ten feet. Yes. Just that's back fine. away from... The yep. walls, they're both coming at me at the same yeah, side. Yeah, yep. no, happy with that. Numal is down, can't parry, and he's nowhere to go. He's in a lot of pain. He's going to do nothing apart from gasp for breath. Cherry, your turn. Okay. Um, you can see Gark number six on the wall about to leap yeah. on. Yeah. 
That's... You know that silk is fast, but you know that these garks are prodigious yeah. athletes. In case, yes, considering they just climbed down a 20 foot drop. How deep is this water? I can still find my You can my wade boat. through it, yeah, you waded. Yeah, so I'm yeah. going to get in the center of the. So I'm 10 away from him. Yeah. Get my short range bonus, and I'm going to go, yeah, gark number six. Shoot him in the face. Oh, it puts it over 100 this time. <laughs> You're creeping up. And creeping that up, arrow man. also flies into the bushes. Holy dooly. And this is making up for last time where I was rolling 90s and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all the good Even rolls so. last time. Have okay, let's have some time. initiative rolls, please, folks. Okay, uh, surprise, surprise. It's Silk, it's you to go first. Now, you know there's a Gark above you poised to leap. The Gark number four is badly hurt and struggling uh, so you can go past him with no problem um, but there is another snarling creature who has just buried an axe in Numal he might be a problem yeah exactly um, I hate to leave but I'm gonna I'm gonna do that uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 I'm gonna move to there 25 feet uh, yes you can move around yep so that's 18%, so minus 18. So I'll do the same thing and sweep uh, number five, hopefully getting it off a new mole. Okay. So here we go. Sweep again. Come on, Selk. Kia! Yeah. Kia! Oh, oh. Uh, oh. It manages to hit, but it doesn't do much. Yeah, you've uh, hit it with for one point of damage. So Keep looking at Charna. All you've really done is said hello. Cat. <laughs> yeah, I am to a threat. Yes, right. Don't ignore me! So Gark number three leaps off the wall and howling towards you, John, gambling across the grass, snarling. It too has um, one of these flint-like hand axes. This Gark is a little bit bigger and heftier than the others, and it tries to slash at your legs with its axe as it runs at the ground towards you. And it manages to catch you just above the reinforcing of your leather boots, but for a minor wound, um, you're far too experienced a fighter really to be troubled by these creatures. He jumped uh, up, Gavin! Get your axe away from me! Gark number four is still stunned and unable to do much, and it daggers away, clutching at the ruin of its shattered elbow. Probably going to run away. Ugnan, your turn. Ugnan shifts the axe that he's been holding in his shield hand and uh, goes forward to stand beside Sharna and see if, what Gark 6 does. Gark 6 is going to attack uh, Ugnan, he'll be parrying whatever he's got left. So he's done 20 foot of movement, shifted a weapon. Yeah. That's probably, he's probably only got about 60% maximum parry left. Okay, Cran, it's your turn. All right, big guy, let's see what you got. Can't I roll things like that? There's only a 42. Uh, so that is on Gark number three, pretty much as good as it gets. So that's 40 points, goodness me, and of course, an E slash critical. What this is teaching me is if you want to fight a really powerful fighter with an axe, just don't do it if you've got no massive suit of mail on, because no. it'll slice you to pieces. 55, so you slam your axe into this poor creature's uh, chest. So what I'm going to do is scream fully, like frothing in the face, scream at him, just fuck off, and then I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to run uh, towards Silk, so uh, I guess I can, I'll probably move like five or ten feet, no much more than that this round, but I'm yeah. assuming these, these guys are not any trouble at the moment and the, the crew may be injured. Okay, so Gark number three is badly injured. Gark number one is also badly injured. They're thinking twice. So Gark number one is, is able to move. Uh, number three isn't. He's obviously badly injured, stunned, um, with a hideous wound on his chest that's probably going to drive him off into the jungle. Gark number six uh, leaps off the rocks at Shana. Ugnan, you had your axe ready. The creature lands and is going to lash out at Shana. You, I know, had some action left. I don't know where the RNC rule stand on this, but if you want to make some sort of attack, you can. Sure. It's, um, they said the 20 foot of movement is 36%, 10% yep. after shifting the way. Let's say he's got 54% of his. Um, OB, let's just call that half, so that's like an attack. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, happy with that. That's a miss. 
Yes, it is. Uh, the Garks aren't heavily armoured at cave, so you flash out with your axe, but miss the Gark then um, tries to swing its hatchet at Shana. Ooh, that's quite a good strike. So the axe catches Shana. Miss. What is Shana's DB? Drill defence must be awesome. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes. Should have all her adrenals up. Yep, that's a miss. Damn it. Having all your adrenals up sounds like some sort of uh, got some sort of nasty virus or something. Yes. <laughs> it's that sort of something that happens on a Friday night. In- uh, I was going. That was the other thing too. I was thinking maybe it's uh, one of those dystopian future. Yes, programs. right. <laughs> uh, Gart number one um, is able to fight, so he will attempt with his hand axe to hit you, Cram. But he's badly injured, and that's almost certainly a miss. So an axe is feebly flailed at you, but comfortably. Shana turns her attention to the Gark that piteously tried to attack her, or pitifully, sorry, tried to attack her. She's done with playing around, so this will be a rank four, I think, because why not? Blimey. So that's a nine and an E critical. I think the girl the Gark was, wasn't that surprised that Cram, uh, that, um, Shana lashed out with it, but it certainly been unprepared in terms of defending adequately. Cherry, it's your turn. Zero from two so far. Can you give me a perception roll, please, Cherry? You're not in fact, you're not engaged with anything. And there's something moving in the air above you. Can you give me a perception roll, please, before you make your play? Mm. Okay. Okay, flying up above you looks like um a serpent like creature some sort of dragon type creature it's um quite high at the moment coming out of the sun and is coming down towards you okay so as i as i get ready to to lose my bow at number six i just yell out we got to get rid of these guys and take cover as soon as possible too small to be a dragon too elongated dragon you think it's a wibbon cherry even worse. But these are dangerous uh, bestial creatures. Fangs, yep. teeth, poison. When when you say high up, you mean like it looks small high up or...? It looks small because it's high up. It's not yep. round. I'm just trying to work out how many rounds before it lands on us. <laughs> you think you've got two rounds before it comes in. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, again, I yell out, clean up this mess and get inside as quick as possible. Where's the damn entrance? We've bought... We've called friends, look up. And they'll take the shot. Yay! Over a 20! Yay! Shooting <laughs> and making work. And this arrow flies home, hits uh, guard number 6. Yep. 14 points. And a D-puncture critical. This time your arrow catches the creature. True and embeds itself in his arm, almost pinning his arm to uh, the side of his body. That should be enough, you think, to convince him to go away and do something else on a Friday evening. Wonderful. Uh, Gart number five, who miraculously is relatively unscathed. Oh, he now turns his attention to you, I'm afraid, Silk. Okay. So the Gark looks at you and tries to bury his hatchet in your foot and it looks like Duns though you are a lot n- more nimble than you um, look certainly your top down token anyway and he manages to hit you for just damage that's all a flesh wound uh Numa is still stunned <laughs> Numal is stunned, stunned and unable to move uh initiative rolls please everybody nobody makes me bleed my own blood <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, right, the Wibbon is getting closer, and he's zooming in to pack you, but he's still high up in the air. Silk, it is your turn. Oh man, so this big giant lizard thing is flying around. Okay, I'm going to try to attack five, and then I'm going to run, so uh, 50% attack if I may. Yes. And I'll use the other percentage for moving away. Uh, so 50 is... So it's not that much. 
minus 11. Okay, here we go. Stay away! <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, it misses, unfortunately. <laughs> now okay. move. I thought that was quite good. Yeah, and I will move 50% of my action. I can move 67 feet, so I'll start plotting that out. I'll get to there for yeah, now. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Ugnan, it is your turn. Do we see an obvious way up into the temple? From where you are, no. Certainly the side that you face uh, is very, very steep. You could climb it, and the climb wouldn't be too difficult. It would just be... Um, it would take time. But it's not a difficult climb, so... In game terms, it would be an easy climb, but it would take a round to climb up. Okay, so that's what Argon's going to do. He's going to use this turn to get to the base of uh, the nearest cliff, trying to thread his way in between Garks to make sure none of them take a swipe at him as he runs by. There's no attack of opportunity. Uh, I just think that way lies problems. Okay, so he'll, he'll get to the base yeah. then and try and climb yeah, that's next, fine. Next, next go. Yeah, but, um, looking at the rock cliff as you are as you up, you can see you have plenty of hand holds and foot holds. It would take no more than a round climb up. Okay, so Ugnan, you move to the rock base and begin to think about climbing up. Gart number three is badly injured. And... Can I say, sure, as he's running by, he's pointing to the side going, look, 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 to the Garks and then running. So hopefully they might look up. Okay. okay, the Garks seem to sense something because they are sniffing the air and you can hear this uh, rhythmic whoosh of the women's wings as it flies in. Uh, the Garks, you'd assume, if you can hear it, can also hear it. Uh, Gark number four, who is uninjured, has certainly heard the uh, whoosh of wings, and rather than attacking, hooting, he runs off away from uh, the rest of you. He's broken off. Gark number one, He's been hammered a couple of times by Cran's uh, axe, also disengages and runs away seeking a cover of the deep foliage. So he's broken away and uh, Gark number one. Where's Gark number one go? Oh, yeah, he's legged it. Gark number five. Um, he's uninjured. Numel is down. He can see Sharna hurl one of his friends against a rock, almost killing him. Gark number five hops over the wall and scuttles off and breaks off fighting as well. Shana assesses the situation and she too will run to the rocks to start climbing up, seeking cover from the wyvern that's coming in. Cran, it's your turn. You can see the wyvern coming in. You've got this round and next round and then the wyvern will be on you. So I'm taking a look at that and looking at the plate mailing, I've already got my axe in hand um, and thinking actually running around maybe the easier option. Um, if I, I'd need to make a maneuver, moving maneuver roll to try and get into a sprint, wouldn't I? Well, yes. Uh, could you give me the, an idea of the the difficulty of doing that? Um, if you're just sprinting through the jungle, sprinting yeah, around so the rocks, sprinting around the rocks. I'm assuming this area here would be the easiest way in up there. So there's no climbing involved. Yeah. So if you're going around clockwise, the ground is actually fairly open. I'd say that's um, a medium, uh, sorry, a light difficulty. So you can add plus 10 to your manoeuvre roll. Okay. Um, so I've just click on the moving manoeuvre and add 10 then. Yeah. And no other modifiers? No, that's no. it. Okay. So basically you can move 80% um, or you get an 80 distance that you wanted to move. Okay, so if you I... were sprinting, you can move 80% of that sprint distance. And the sprint, is, so first off, where do I find my basic so move? So your basic move is, I think, 60 feet, I'm guessing, something like that. So you've got your base stride, and I think a sprint multiplies that by four, uh, if right. I'm right, and you will get 80% of that. Okay, so uh, 32 times, it's about 2 50. There's a max if you put the percentage in under mm percentage, uh, and then you can click down your pace for sprint. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, and the max is going to be how much you can move total. 
Is that, on the, com- is that on the combat tracker? Yeah, I'm just looking at it now. Tracker. Thank you. Yeah, that's extremely helpful. So um, what's the maximum you can move in basically heavy plate? I'm guessing it might not be a fast sprint or a dash. It may be just be a sprint. Yes, I think it's just a sprint at least. Would you still be able to sprint in heavy plate? I think probably a run would be the most you could do. So you can do 80% of your run. 80% of a run, that's 96 feet. All right. Thank you. That's really helpful. But get about to there around that corner. Yep. So as you run to there, you can see that actually the footing here and the climb is considerably easier. So that even though you are wearing fairly encumbering heavy armour, uh, the climb here would be easy. This is a much shallower slope ground has broken away so that the climb is easier and what i'm going to start doing is wait uh, i'll be screaming all the way up there and waving my axe over my head saying come here you ugly bastard trying to divert the attention of the women to me from the guys climbing the cliff okay it's not what i'd have done but then i'm not (laughs) crammed okay the women will certainly cherry it's your turn okay thank you um so i just want to check can no more move as we all leave this body. Yeah, that, that that's so exactly bad. what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's all right. I, 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 yeah, I think he's still available on Discord, so we can tell him his character. <laughs> man down, man down. Yeah, he can move. I mean, it's got can't parry, no stuns, but I still think he'd be gasping in pain. Um, he's not got any bleeding wounds, so yes, he can still move, but he's going to move slightly slower, let's say. Okay. Or so. so I'm going to try and I'm going to run into the no more yep. grab him by the hand and just pull him along so his movement can be tracked in this up into under those trees there yeah and then i'll want to what i'd like to do is use my hide skill to get him down and get myself okay. down right so why don't you make uh, so you're helping him hide so yes you will make let me have a look at his hide skill. So I think basically you're going to make kind of um, a hide roll based on your average hide skill, aren't you? Yes. That strikes me as being something that you're trying to do. So what's his stealth? Do? Maybe if he has like a level bonus or something, if he's got right. anything. Oh, yeah, let me just look it up. And it looks like he's got no skill in stealth. Oh, yes, he has. Okay, according to this... I'm afraid to say we're looking at minus thirty. Holy dooly. for his or for me all up? No, that's his. That's his skill roll. So, so take thirty off your roll. Okay, I'll, put, I'll make it an extremely hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah, is fair is... enough because I'm trying to hide him as well as myself. Yeah. But... Just snap his neck. You'll be better. <laughs> 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 better at hiding than being dead. Leave okay. me! Go off without I, me! I sort of, I sort of want to see this, but I don't as well. So I'm going to roll it in the tower. Okay. Now, hopefully, the the dead body of number six, which is okay. on, might attract the attention if someone doesn't wave his axe at it. <laughs> uh, you're hoping, aren't you? Okay. So Numel gasps, thanks, and whimpering in pain, tries to hide under the bushes and foliage that you have covered him with. Uh, okay. So. Can we have initiative? The women is still about 30 or 40 above the um, upper elevation of the temple. So still high in the air. And it looks like it has been attracted by Cran's bellowing, shouting and more obvious movement. So it is moving towards you, Cran, as intended. Plan is working. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Stop helping! <laughs> At which point Crad says, no, I was saying go away, go away. <laughs> yeah. Love it. You've done, you've done it now, Crad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, so we see this thing fly overhead, land on the top, or at least hover no, over that it's, way. It's flying over that way, so it's heading. Uh, basically, you can see it heading towards Crad. I won't put a pointer on this. The yeah, guards, that's meanwhile, are scattering and running, so I'm going to delete them all. Okay. Um, Silk's going to cast Shield on herself. I feel like I have before, but I can't remember. But yeah, she'll cast Shield on herself, and that'll be her round done. I think you did that last session. It, it sounds familiar, yeah. Because I was over prepping a Shock Bolt, and you'd cast Shield. Yeah, and then moved in, I thought. But that... I'll, I'll, I'll just take the round doing that, and I'll let Ugnin jump up first and be the meat target. Oh, that's so <laughs> generous of you. 
<laughs> Done. <laughs> so Sean says, oh, I'm just casting a spell, otherwise I would move. Bippity bobbity boo. Yeah. Please go first. Okay, climb it. Oh, good job, buddy. Oh, nice, nice climb. Very nice. Oh, he's come a long way in three weeks, hasn't he? Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> that that's a family trademark uh, prehensile tail. But uh, <laughs> source of embarrassment for some <laughs> in the fens is not uh, without its advantages. And you clamber up like a veritable monkey onto the top. The gar uh, sorry, the wyvern hasn't seen you and is focused on this still bellowing cran. Um, so much for his plan. You can see there are some stone steps that lead up to what looks like um, a raised dais. Um, something is flickering from the top of the dais, however. It looks like there are lights on top of the dais. Not torches, not lam lanterns, but some other sort of light source on top of the dais. Any obvious doors? No. No doors at all. Okay. Solid stonework. Cran, it is your turn. <laughs> Fucking hell, this arm is heavy. And, um, <laughs> so the women is about 40 feet above the temple, just hovering at the moment? Uh, moving towards you, not hovering towards you. All right. Um, it will be on you next round. Right, yeah, big fucking raven. Let's have it. So I'm going to move to about... We'll get on to basically a bit more higher ground. It's okay, okay. so give me a manoeuvre roll. I won't ask you to make a climb because it's fairly... But okay. it's, a, it's a very hard manoeuvre roll just to see how far you get. Um, exactly. There's no real danger unless you badly... But it's just to see how far you can get before it moves in on you. Yeah, Fran is I'm, Oscar the Grouch, though. <laughs> my, my moving manoeuvre bonus is, uh, is not, not optimal. Oh. So that's about 70%. So you can certainly get to about there, I reckon. Okay. Which and now means I'm gonna just... you're on solid ground, face the women. You're not clambering and climbing. That's All right, I'll, I'll brace my two feet um, in a in a defensive stance um, and then defend like Billy O against this thing. <laughs> okay. Shana, meanwhile, is going to climb up. Yep, so she's up with no problems. Cherry, do you want to remain hidden or do you want to cautiously move out? Okay, I'm going to stuff free acapotage into Numel's hands. Okay. And say eat these when eat these when you can. Seven. So yep. that's D ten each. Um and yeah, I'm going to uh I'll jog up 1.5 to the. Yep. Um, I'm I'm dropping my need for hidden at the moment to do this. Yeah. And then I'm going to use my my whipper climbing. Yay! Gives me Ooh. plus 10, I think it is, because I can get it to latch on. Yeah. So there is, as you lash your whip out, the whip. As long as you can identify something for the other end of the whip to catch itself on, and there yep. are some so vines right at the top that the uh, whip will grip onto and wrap themselves around, and Excellent. that will allow to use the 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 whip. Awesome! Give me a plus ten to my climbing roll. Yep. Boom! Oh Jesus! Wow. I swing myself up like Indiana Jones so you from the ground up to the run top. Run across to here, then run along the base and land probably up there. That's so you've it. Got you're I... up as well. Uh, no. so far more stylishly than anybody else. Wow. Everyone else in the world, she actually walked like she was suction cupped her head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Numel remains where he and eats his um, acutege. Okay, initiatives, please, then. This will obviously be an important one for Fran. Okay, buddy, we're coming. Hogan was looking all pleased himself with that really good climb roll that just sees bloody Sharna and Jerry just like virtually jump up the top. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh man, this wyvern's fast. Cran, I'm sorry. There's not a hope in hell of me beating that, so uh, oh, holy no. crap, you have to quit, I'll say. Okay, the wyvern screams in at you, Cran. I am defending with everything I've got right now, though. So it lashes out with a claw at you, Fran. Uh, so one of the claws, clang, uh, it lashes out with another claw. This one, however, as you roll away the first claw, slashes out with the second claw. 
And that one also misses. By the hells, you're fast. That's all it will do this round. It will group in with two attacks. Silk, your turn. Hey, yeah, uh, sorry. I'm going to uh, climb up. Actually, screw that. I'm a mage. I'm going to cl- I'm gonna cast Leaping, and I'll leap up. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 10, 20, 30. Okay. <laughs> and then make a sound. Okay. Bloody shit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> And that's so I'm going to go to the toilets. No, screw that. I'm a mage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can do mighty magics. <laughs> that's right. Okay. So I'll cast that. It's first level leaping. Okay, so just uh, don't fumble. Oh, you've done it. Yeah, see. Yeah. So you leap up to the top. Uh, Ugnan, it's your turn. I'm sorry, Ugnan. Everybody has climbed more successfully than you. And you <laughs> got 110. I know. Well. That is the best <laughs> roll I've ever made. Exactly. Has done it better than me. Okay, bloody show offs. <laughs> okay, he's going to sprint. Uh, not sprint. Sorry, he's going to do a jog, which is one point five pace. <laughs> That's another. I'm going to sprint. No, no, no. What was I thinking? I'm going to... <laughs> well, it's a, he thinks it's a sprint, but it's a jog to everybody okay. else. Um, I won't embarrass you by asking maneuver. I think this is fairly. It says it's routine. Flat ground. Yeah, exactly. So you'd make your way. Um, over the dais, and the women is now probably about two feet above Cran's head, hissing and slashing at him with his talons. Um, you can see that the creature's is viciously barbed pale, which he's got uh, poised above his head, almost like a scorpion, ready to strike at Cran probably next round. Okay, so he'll get that far. Um, that's 60 feet. Uh, it gives him 27% more, so there's not much you can do with that, so that's the end of his round. Okay, uh, Cherry, it's your turn. Oh, yay. Okay, so um, Cherry's going to jog, and she. Uh, what What I'd like to do is get up underneath the archway there. Yes, so that archway is of... intact, so it would give you cover from the women should it fly at you. That's the one, um, and I'm just going to knock an arrow so it's ready to release... Okay. First thing yep. next round. Yep. Aim that thing up. Shana will similarly come in. She won't be able to attack this round. Cran, it's your turn. Watch out, Shana. I've got those things bloody fast. No, swing the axe. Just keep away from everything. <laughs> is, is this a large or extremely large? Uh, large. Uh, so that's Cran. Uh, Numo has taken an active he feels better. He comes out and we'll get to there and he'll start climbing up. But he'll only get about halfway up, I think. Okay, uh, and then we'll go for initiative roll again. 58 for initiative. It's getting better. Wow. Makes silk That's look slow. Yeah, I'm, I'm Cran Lake now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the Wibbon is not really aware of Shana and is focused solely on you, Cran Braid. Uh, lashes out with a one talon foot that misses as you desperately roll out of the way. Its second claw, as you roll one way, attempts to strike you. The thing is quite canny. Uh, but you get your axe up in time and deflect it. Unfortunately, though, that leaves you uh, less able to defend against its tail, which lashes over its head, going straight for your chest. So the tail also misses you. Um, so obviously, Cran, your sacrifice, the plan actually seems to be working. As angry and ferocious as the creature is, it's been unable to, in boxing terms, lay a glove on you. Meanwhile, Silk arrives, ready to do mighty magics. <laughs> and she starts casting. That's her turn, 90% prep. <laughs> and she's ready to cast. Yeah. I'll, uh, actually, I'll move 10%. I'll move Okay. The... I've just got a vision of Silk just checking out her fingernails as she's sort of like concentrating in her mind or something, <laughs> just making sure they're all nice and even. <laughs> um, I'm dying here, Silk. Hurry up. <laughs> Shana sweeps at the creature. Goodness me, that is another good roll. 
Oh, you're flanking as well, I think. If they can be flanked. Up in the air, so I'm going to go. But she certainly manages to tweak its tail. And that is another 15 points of damage on the creature. Okay, so this round Ogden's going to use the shield ability to put plus 10 dB blur on Crown this time. So an extra... Extra yep, 10 dB. Okay. So he's, yep, okay. he's sh- shining brightly and he's also blurred. I don't know if that even works, but they're stackable apparently. <laughs> I'm just uh, a... I'm just <laughs> a f- <laughs> yeah, like a, sun, a sunrise coming over the hill. Like, beautiful. Oh my god, he's a walking disco. <laughs> okay, so Ugnan, you cast your spells. Cran, you are now armoured like nothing's been armoured before. You've gone DB. The creature yeah, I went, I went for full put anything on you but it's still hammering away at you that's working well then I'm, I'm going for full parry still um do i get any flank benefit is that only around the side I it's will, facing... the creature is now since attacked by shana i will give shana a flank and i'll give you a flank it is so quick and so big that i'm not going to give you any rear attack I'll certainly give you a flank bonus when you attack Okay, so flank attack is plus 15, all right. Yeah. That's better. So your axe bites into the creature finally, turned to face its tormentor on the other side. Given it's large, though, yes, that will do it. Can you give me an open-ended attack roll because it's a large creature? Is that open-ended high? Yes. Oh, nice. (laughs) Bastard. (laughs) Oh, nice. Well, that's okay. good. Shame about the second roll. But... Kill right, creature so in one blow. 114. No. Awesome strikes. I don't think these are drankable. Awesome strike. Um, at another 50 hit points of damage. Stunned for three rounds and unable yes. to parry. Yes, indeed. Okay, so the creature is stunned and unable to parry for three rounds. Is now badly injured as your axe slams into its into its side as it reared round to have um, a slash at Shana, which was foolish. Cherry, your turn. You can see the fight's going away. The creature is badly injured and Cran's axe has just given it a hefty thump in the ribs. Awesome, awesome. So I'm ready to loose my bow. I just want a point of order so people don't go, what? Those who are watching or here, here playing... Um, I just realised that my short bow OB is 72. Oh, I'd forgot to update the POM. Okay. My skill bar. So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay there just in case. I don't like bunching up around those sorts of things. So, uh, just go for the shot. Nice. Uh, yeah. Missed. Aaron ah. flies off into the game. Wow. Oh to go where Pyro's going missing. Numel climbs up to the top and that will be his action. I think he's still wincing in pain. Okay, uh, initiative rolls, please. Snake eyes. That was sexy. That That already got open. It's me back. (laughs) (laughs) Call me Lumbago. It does give... Yep. Silk, you managed to go first. The creature is injured. One wing seems to be um, having difficulty in extending properly. The creature well, can just, fly, but is slowed. Just in time, as a ball of lightning is uh, formed in my hands, I'm going to move 25%, which is seven squares. Two, four, six. And I'm going to shoot that wyvern right in its beak. And shock bolt. <laughs> oh, you didn't say just tickle it. Oh, yeah, I didn't put it in. I thought a uh, five plus five more if it's not wearing a sh- uh, helmet. <laughs> it's not wearing a helmet. So you were just wildly as per That's usual. Right. <laughs> and the creature has been struck for a small amount of damage. No critical. Op- that's okay. I'm here to serve. For the sake of the audience, the magician articulating. <laughs> uh, the Wiffen is stunned and unable to parry. Squawks 
and moves around and slightly higher in air, but still within reach. Uh, just Shana, though, cannot reach it. And moves to here to get ready. I don't think she's going to do anything foolish like jumping at it. Oh, I bet if Craig was here, he would. Cran, um, given your height, of your weapon, you can still uh, reach the creature. I'll kind of move up again, swing my axe in a double overhand shot to try and wing it, basically, um, with giving it everything. That's quite a lot of everything. So uh, that's 34 points. And uh, you've managed to do a critical. Your axe is magic. It is, yeah. Right, so if you want to make an open-ended roll on magical attack creature table thing. No. Oh dear, that's a bit of a shame. That's an extra 15 hit points, I'm afraid. Come here, you bugger! Uh, so the creature is still stunned and struggling to uh, fly. Ugnan, your turn. Uh, Ugnan just looks up, uh, looks at his axe, looks at, look at the height of the thing. And just shrugs <laughs> and just uh, run, runs over towards Numal with some uh, healing herbs to give him. And you didn't fancy doing a Thor thing and hurling? No, no. He, he, no, can, okay. he, can, he can barely hold on to it himself. Okay. We'll give, got... we'll give uh, Numal three draft. Okay. Uh, do you want to make the rolls now? Yeah, sure. And I'll apply them to Numal then. Okay. Ooh, That's dear. this round? Yeah. Uh, so new mail, and that'll be the next round afterwards. Okay, I'll all, I'll apply them all now. Well, uh, that's uh, that's after its best before date. That one is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so new mail, choose on some more things that you fish out of pouches. Uh, Cherry, it's your turn. It is I. Let me shoot again. The very verily might of my bow. I believe in you, Cherry. You can do this. I squint. <laughs> Use the force, Cherry. That's it. Ooh, that's better. Oh, 66. That would have been a good critical. <laughs> yeah. But it is um, a better hit. It is a hit. It's a grazing hit, but it is a hit nonetheless. And initiative, please, folks. I didn't even get a crit. Oh, my lord. No, sorry. I uh, know, right? Still. Look, is thinking of something dumb and crazy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jump onto its back. SD. Shut up, Cran. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a self-discipline role. Uh, yeah, I've here already we been mid here we go. Oh okay, dear. Okay, she she starts casting. Oh it's my gonna God. be it's gonna be <laughs> leaving to land on its. <laughs> <laughs> but next round it'll resolve because it's a second level spell. Right, third so level. let's let so you start preparing leaving so yeah. you can land on the creature's back. Yeah, I can I can actually move in close to it just because I can move three squares for ten percent. Right. So let's just hope that this thing is dead. Right yes, because otherwise it's going to take off into the jungle, back, <laughs> and at best it will drop you off in that volcano that Numa went an irrational exactly. fear of. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, the women is stunned. Uh, can't parry. It can fly around. I think it's going to go higher in the air, out of reach, unless you've got a missile weapon or a bow. Numal isn't able to hit it. Shana isn't able to. Cran, if you've got a bow or any sort of missile weapon, you can have a go at it. But otherwise, it's out of reach as it's flown up into the air. So I'll swing Tarnax axe into the earth just beside me and draw the heart bow out. Yep. And go take a bit of a deep breath. God, this is a pull on this. Uh, right, let's see what it's got. Right, so I'll, you uh, can fire next round then. With yeah, so I'm just lo I'm loading it right now. Yep. So. Ugnan, unless you've got a spell or something. No, heading over to Cherry no. now. And then give okay. Cherry. Cherry, I'll give you back the three acubadars you gave to Numal. Oh, okay, thanks. That's awesome. I said, put it in my pocket. Don't bug me when I'm trying to aim up this bloody thing. Oh, sorry, sorry, lass. Thanks. I appreciate it, though. Okay, Cherry, it is your turn. I think you can, you've can. got a short to you for every round with a slight yeah. penalty. Minus five this That's time, right. which 
isn't helping my cause whatsoever. Oh, no. Definitely not. <laughs> um, nope. hope someone can hit this bloody thing. You've not been lucky with your rolls, have you? Okay, uh, we'll have some initiative rolls. Okay, oops, I want to reduce that down to there. And the creature will still go first. It will still hover angrily, still stunned. Silk, it's your turn. Unfortunately for the party, uh, not least you, the creature is still functioning, flying around. You can attempt to cast your spell if you wish and land on its back. I'm an idiot. You're yep. certainly a something. Yeehaw! Okay. Oh, I try to bear it to the ground if I can, like... Uh, where she appears is basically on top of its head, facing it backwards. Right. So um, her butt is on its eyes. <laughs> I don't know if this has ever happened in any other Role Master game. I'm wondering now what role <laughs> is in any of the books. You're, I trying, reckon... to, you're trying to club it to get to death with oh. a six-inch stiletto on top of its well, head. Well, just so it can't fly away. Yeah, I... to... no, Sorry, so you've cast your spell, so you've landed on its back. I still think you then need to make some sort of manoeuvre roll to stay on its back because it's flying in the air. So you've got to make um, some sort of orientation roll and a manoeuvre roll, I think, to basically find something quickly to hang on to. So that it, you don't just fall off. Now, fortunately, it's only about 30 feet up in the air. Orientation roll. Um, perception? Yeah, perception. Okay, here something we go. like that. Good enough for me, so you can find something to hold on to. Now give me an agility roll. Okay. I think. That's, uh, oh, sorry, that's movement uh, agility quick. Yeah, just give me an agility roll. I think that's the MM. Yeah. Yeah, that's just strictly agility. And that's certainly... I. Do you know what? For the sake of for the sake of this being streamed, let's just say you're on top of the Wyvern's back. Exactly what you're now going to do be on me. Right, so you have successfully cast your spell and with a preternatural agility you've managed to find something to grab onto. You have wrapped your arms around this creature's neck. Unfortunately, of course, when it recovers, you've got no protection now against its tail which has a nasty, vicious-looking sting. Shana is unable to help. Cran, you can shoot at it with a heart bow, if you wish. So I'm not sure if it's magical. That makes yes, a difference. Yes, it is. I, it is. Yes, okay. it is. Right, I'll, uh, I'll lick down the side of the one of the uh, fletchings. Oh, my God, that's made it hard. Stupid cow's jumped on its back. And then I'll uh, let loose. Nice roar. Your arrow flies home. Wow, points of damage. This old penalty 40, that's terrible. Ognan. Okay, Ognan is going to take his movement and then start preparing a spell. So, uh, only one square. Okay. There you go, that's it. Okay. Cherry. Um, okay, so how up in the air is this thing? 40 feet. Okay. It's struggling because it's got a creature on top of it. It's <laughs> got a passenger. And well, it's badly it injured, so it's not going to climb higher. That's cool. Which you assume is the only thing that makes sense for Silk's strange attack. Please roll anything over an eight. Don't think you've rolled over 50, have you? Um, really yeah, no, I rolled a 60-something yeah. and I hit 158 and it still wasn't enough to uh, do a crit. Sorry, that I rolled a 60. Uh, right, Numel... And he will try and attack the creature. Um, I think that's going to miss as well. Uh, right. Initiative rolls, please. Silk, what do you want to do? Silk starts preparing a shock bolt and is going to touch this thing with, and slide down its neck as it crashes and burns. Uh, uh, next round, I'll complete it. Okay, um, I'm going to impose a penalty on your actual spell, given this thing is moving around, but it won't be a big penalty. Um, no something problem. like a minus 10 or a minus 20, because this thing is thrashing around in the air as you yep. cast the spell, if that's okay. No problem. Okay, so the Wibbon is still stunned, is surprised that it's now got a rider, um, is unable to fly any higher because of the weight and the fact that it is injured. So it continues to sort of thrash around helplessly. Fortunately, because it's stunned, it can't lash out at you with its tail or try and whip its long neck and um, bite you, Silk, so you are safe. Charna can't reach it with anything. Ugnan. Second round of prep, that's it. Okay. Numel will have a go with bow. 
with a small penalty. And that's going to be a miss. So dodges. Cran, your bow is going to take, I think, a round to load. Unless you want to fire with a penalty, I think it's uh, minus 20. No, no, I, I'm not. It's it, I'm, it's hard enough pulling this damn thing with me armor on, so I'm going to... Uh, just load. Just load, yep. Okay. Cherry, you can, of course, with your quicker bow, you can fire again if you wish. I wish I could fire too, but what I'll do... Wish me everybody... Hold the... Fire 58, 145. Oh, color change, too. This arrow. I told you, the magic of changing the color of your dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, That yeah. arrow flies home. Just darken the shade, and I think you'll roll in there. <laughs> That's right. Okay, initiative time, please, folks. Come on, so. Come on, so. Ah. Uh, Ooh, it rolled good initiative, so. Crabs on fire with initiative, and he's still nearly lost. <laughs> I didn't calculate the wyvern going before me. <laughs> okay, Silk, you're actually going to go first. Oh, did he roll less? Uh, yes, there's a penalty to initiative. Oh, Top. nice. Stunned, so I'm going to reduce his initiative. Oh, that's cool. i got to remember that when I'm stunned, though, so <laughs> thank you. No, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think the wyvern is used to have. I think that's that it. would uh, reduce his speed. <laughs> so 35 for rear attack. Um, anything, no, rear is, that's all I get is the rear attack. Uh, and this is touching for 35. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shock bolt him with this second round of casting here. Let's hope there's no fumble. <laughs> that's, that's important, yes. Okay, so that is, uh, oh, stunned too, oh right? wow. Yeah, stunned as well, but you've maxed out on your damage. So that's 11 points. More importantly, you've managed to do a critical on the creature. So this Ooh. is an open-ended roll because obviously your magic attack on a large creature. So this right is open-ended. Okay, oh. here we go. Here we go. Come on. Big, big, big. Open it. Oh, almost sexy. 25 hit points. Oh, that's pretty The respectful. creature is yes. one more decent hit and the creature is going to come to the ground. It is close. To collapse. You fried his head. Nice shot. <laughs> so the creature shivers and tremors, and you can see it briefly illuminated. Rear legs stretch out um, as the electricity courses and causes all its muscles to contract. Its tail straightens as well. There's a flick of venom that flies off into the bushes, but it's unable to reply. Shana is unable to reach. Cran. The creature is close to collapse. One good shot from Heartbow will put it down. Yeah, um, my my accuracy is not great. How? What's the range now? Is it still climbing? No, it's 40 feet. Silk actually climbing. Silk uh, teleporting onto its back. Stop the creature from climbing any, climbing any higher. Okay, so it's no penalty. And no. Can't do anything else other than hope for the best. Same, exactly the same as last time. I think it's just five hits. That is five hit points. Same roll as last time. <laughs> that was a good roll, too. As we um, see Cran starting to strip tease while he's trying to load the bow at the same time. Yeah, so get this damn fan braces off. Numal has a chance to put the creature down. Ooh, and it looks like that will do it. Numal sinks his arrow into the creature's head. <laughs> One. Um, that is enough. The creature begins to plummet to the ground, screeching. Silk, I'd like you to make uh, an agility roll, please, just to see okay. how you fall to the ground. I mean, it's a fall okay. of 40 feet. Is if Silk it's also a... plummeting to the ground, screaming? I, I would be. Um, <laughs> if it's the same round. Possibly, yes. If it's the same round, I can't, but if it's the next round when this no, is happening. No, this is the same round, so you're okay. unable to make a no spell landing yeah that's right um, so I'll move him can, new yeah move him maneuver roll just to determine oh, 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 oh. it was 80 and then zero okay so i think that's probably a b crush it's only 40 feet good luck silk i know can i have your stuff yeah <laughs> right it's gonna be buried with me apparently <laughs> yeah you're ah! in Oh, bed in shit. the ground. Uh, strike to the back, knocks the foe down, smashes tendons, 
Foe is stunned and unable to parry for rounds. Foe is at minus 30. So effectively, um, Silk, that means no damage. Wow. But That's but the bust, difference bust, bust of the tendon? plus 40. What's the negative? Yeah, but there's no permanent damage on the table. Better than paralysis. So... Yeah, true. <laughs> so there's no... Uh, it says minus 30, but it doesn't there say permanently, and there's no text which says tendon damage. Okay. So I think it's temporary damage from that ball. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. Much better. Uh, so the you, women... you didn't sound sorry at all there, Stuart. No. You used the oh. words, but you were really just disappointed. Yeah, oh, come on. This is why, this is why you roll. I love you. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so the women crashes to the ground. Silk tumbles down. And as luck would have it, she lands not on the rocks or on the uh, stone plateau, but on the soft jungle turf. Uh, below, with the women crashing down some 15 feet away to her right. You rush over to your companion. Um, she's dazed, confused, and you can see that um, she's probably suffered some minor damage to her wrist. Again, she'll probably, again. She'll probably recover. Again, again, again. 